Hello, this is Gus from 3dplanner.com. In this video, I want to talk to you about the IK Rig. If you work with rigging and animation, you have probably seen this presentation by Alexander Berezniak on the IK Rig. He presented this work at GDC 2016. And the work, uh, in this work, Alexander tells us the benefits of encoding motion capture data as IK chains instead of FK chains and how we can use that to change the character proportions, edit the motion, create some constraints that would change the style and the speed. And it's very interesting work. I really recommend you watch the original uh, presentation. I'm posting the link down here in the description. I encourage you to look at that. Uh, <clears throat> When I saw this presentation, uh, it was a while ago by accident, and it really hit me that this would have interesting benefits for describing poses for machine learning applications as well. And it's in this light that I want to talk to you about the IK rig. And also I want to present to you a implementation of the IK rig, which I have developed because I couldn't find anything by the author or any, any other implementation that someone had already done of the IK rig and this is it uh, working it live in Maya and uh, I'm uh, along with this video I'm sharing the the open source code for it so if you want to use that for machine learning or for any other purpose feel free to take a look at that so what's the IK rig uh, I got this also from the Alexander's presentation I hope it is okay I'm putting the credits down here but Basically, a regular FK rig, you'd have several bones, uh, you know, for each body part and some arbitrary number of bones for the spine and the neck. And those bones, you know, your Vicon software or any other motion capture uh, software you use will solve motion to those bones from the market to those bones. And you use those to control some other implicit kinematics that would then deform the character. And what Alexander is telling us to do is we should, as an intermediary process, create this IK chains from the FK data because we would then be able to change arbitrarily the number of bones, we would uh, be able to rescale the character easier, and so on. So what are, what are these IK chains? They are six, the IK chains, uh, the spine, the neck, the arms, and the legs. And the data you need to create each one of these is the position of the root and the position of the effector, the direction of the chain itself, <clears throat> and also the orientation of the, the, the effector. And the way Alexander describes in the video is that, although he doesn't go into much detail how this is done, is that you would like to have this, uh, normalized in some fashion uh, in respect to the character's proportion so then you can change the, the size of each of the limbs on the fly so this is precisely what i have done right here uh, if we stop the character from walking around uh, we can see we have the original data which is this rig right here and then we have a intermediary representation which is are those those things I talked about so like right here you have the root of each chain and you have a direction of the chain like a, a pole vector or a vector wherever you call it and then you have the factor with both the position and orientation right here and you have that for all those six chains and with those you can build any sort of rig right here I'm creating a a rig that is exactly a copy of the original but uh, we could for example change the number of bones in the spine we could create a twist bone for the forearms and so on we could do bendy bendy joints for the the legs and uh, we could go crazy with it also uh, let me let me also let me show you the node editor right here so we have the default rig coming in and we get the global, the world matrices for all the components. And we also store right here manually, at least for now, 
the or uh, the uh, hip height, which I take to be like a parameter that would control the overall size of the character and the size of each of the chains. Okay, I have calculated this manually. You could create a script to input this data and so on. But what this does is uh, we use those values to normalize the motion data. And then whenever I decode, so I have an encode node that encodes this FK data into I normalized IK data. And then I have a decode node which decode that normalized IK data into uh, world, uh, not world space data, but you know, into the, the, to the proper kinematic data you want uh, with regards to the size of the character. So right here, I'm just streaming the size from input to output, but I could easily disconnect this and change the character size. So for example, let's change the spine also. Now, if I double click this, I can change the uh, hips height, which I, as I told you, is like a overall character. Oh, geez. Okay. So, uh, get the channel box. If I double click this and I can now change the, so when I change the hips height, I'm changing the overall proportions of the character. So his distance to the floor and also the distance of the joints to the uh, the hips and the, the chest. And when I change each of the, oh Jesus, each of the lengths right here, I can change the proportions of the character. And, okay. So, as you can see, as described in original video, this data makes it very easy for you to retarget the motion to a character of new proportions. Okay. Okay, these are the benefits as described by the author of using the IK rig. Being able to scale the characters on the fly and change its limbs proportions create uh, interesting prop interactions and style modifications and changing the speed. Okay, this last three, they are, um, you really need to see the presentation to understand what he means. He combines the IK rig with some uh, interesting editing techniques and uh, constraints and so on, and this make those possible. Now, why is the IK rig relevant for machine learning? Some machine learning tests uh, require us to describe a character's pose. Uh, those tests may be like uh, for pose generation or for, uh, let's say we want to classify movement based on the character's pose and so on. And there are good and bad ways to describe a pose depending on your, your intent. So for example, one way, one thing you wouldn't use to describe a pose is the character's uh, global position and orientation. Why would you not do that? So let's say the character is at the origin of the world or one kilometer from the origin. It doesn't really matter. The pose is the same. So you want to throw away the data or in case you, you need to have some sense, some sense of this, you get the derivative. You get the change in position and change in orientation. That would be more useful. As to the pose itself, you could describe it, for example, as positions, like the distance between the this bone and this bone, this bone and this bone, and so on. And that would work as long as all of your characters would be of the same size. Uh, if the, the sizes would change uh, either uh, proportionately or disproportionately uh, with different uh, proportion of limbs and so on, this uh, would create problems with their data and something that should be perceived by the model as being of the same pose, it would look like it is from a different pose. So what most papers uh, do, uh, even some that we have talked about in the blog, 
uh, is to describe these poses as orientation. So we get the orientation from this bone to this bone and the orientation, always local orientation, right? Orientation from one bone to the next. So doing this, you'd get uh, the benefits that you're looking for, which are invariance to global position and orientation, invariance to size, and invariance to body part proportions. Those are all desirable. That still leaves us with some problems that I have experienced in, uh, before, and I think other uh, researchers and practitioners have as well. Uh, let me try to show you some of these problems. So right here, I have uh, two sets of lo locators, and imagine those are very complex rigs. So what's the difference between these two? The only difference is that before connecting the locators one to the other in a chain like this, I have rotator locator number six uh, by 90 degrees. And this makes it so that now not only it has a different uh, orientation in respect to this, but also its children have different orientations. You see right here it's 0, 0, 0, and right here it would be 0, 90, 0, okay? Uh, because <clears throat> whenever we parent things inside Maya, uh, it will localize the space of the kinematic component with respect to its parent. So, uh, this is not a uh, property of Euler, okay? This is just how the things work. I can see, show you the values in quaternions. This is locator number two, this is locator number four. You can see the quaternions are also different. Okay, so uh, we could solve this by, you know, instead of uh, using the orientations, you, we could get, for example, the offset from an initial orientation or from the orientation of the bind pose that would fix the problem. But still, there is some fixing to do. And there is another problem that FK chains pose, which is some rigs would have different number of bones, especially for the uh, spine and neck. So maybe you have like one bone for the neck, maybe you have two, maybe you have four bones for the, or three bones for the spine, maybe you have two, maybe you have four, maybe you have five. And it's not only the number, but depending on the number you have, uh, you'd have a different distribution of these rotations. You know, they're not distributed linearly, so you cannot uh, be sure that you, uh, you know, safely linearly interpolate these in, and the data would be consistent. So what I think the IK brings to the table is uh, not only the invariability to global position and orientation, oops, sorry, <clears throat> not only the invariability to global position and orientation, but to size, body parts, initial kinematic setup, and the number of joints. So I think it's actually a better way to describe the, the pose. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about in a little bit more detail. Uh, what I'm talking about is this intermediary data right here. So I have the IK rig encode and the IK rig decode and the IK rig encode generates a, a set of strings that describes the IK rig in a normalized fashion. And if we use a script that I have laid out right here, we can see that. Let me just clean this, give us some more space. And then we get the, uh, uh, this is just the, those values that I showed you in the, in the IK rig encode node, but, uh, they're named, so it's easier to understand what's going on. So the first values, they're global position and orientation. So this you want to throw out or have a, uh, the derivatives first or second order the derivative. Okay. And then from there on, you get the, uh, the root position, which I described, it's always an offset to something. And then the effector, pole vector, and the effector rotation. And you see that the, this, um, offsets, these root positions, they are always normalized by the character size. And the effectors are always normalized by the, the chain size. So, uh, the effector, uh, length is always, uh, inscribed inside the univector and this makes it so that it is uh, invariant to size so it's what we want and as you can see it uh, like right here I have 
uh, two bones from the spine. And uh, actually, this this rig, this is the labeling rig from the uh, Vicon blade software. So it has actually no neck. So I'm using uh, the shoulders right here as the base for my neck and doing some some implicit calculations of, of the orientation of the neck right here. But uh, we could have uh, three bones in the spine, four bones in the spine, two bones in the neck, and no matter, these values would be exactly the same. Okay, And also the initial orientations of these uh, bones, uh, we could change them and how this rig was laid out, it would all remain the same. Uh, another applica interesting application, we could bring uh, different different rigs from different data sets. So I could uh, create one rig with this uh, skeleton right here and use it with a CMU skeleton or with another skeleton from other universities and they would all have the same, exactly same data uh, using this IK rig. So these are the applications I, I think this has for potential applications I think this has for uh, machine learning. And uh, well, as I said, I'm making this available for everybody to use. Uh, there is a GitHub repository under Gustavo EB. It's called IK Rig. It's private now, but I'm making it public. And if you're using this either for machine learning or for any other purposes, let me know. I would uh, love to see what you can come up with. And if we like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel and uh, spread the word. Thank you very much and until next time.